is his last appearance in the 140 pound division before he goes up the welterweight to try to chase a fight against Floyd Mayweather that requires that he put together a terrific performance here tonight it's a two-year age advantage for Khan and he's one inch taller than Peterson and he's got a half inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist weighed in one pound under the 140 pound limit his physical trainer Alex Ariza said he would weigh 148 or 149 tonight unofficially he weighs 149 while Peterson has gone up to 145 or 155 I should say we talked about the nerve that Khan has demonstrated in coming here to fight Peterson on his home turf how about Lamont he had a chance to take this fight several months ago for a $300,000 purse. Didn't like the offer. Turned it down. Elected to fight a pretty good fighter named Victor Cayo for $10,000. This was a big chance, but Larry, he made it pay off. You have to assume that it, part of it was his athletic pride for turning down the $300,000, which would be by far his biggest purse, and part of it street smarts knowing how to negotiate. <laughs> now coming to the ring, the fighting pride of Washington, D.C., Lamont Habib Peterson. Max, at the end of the day, the gamble to double down on the Kyle fight paid off big time monetarily for Peterson. Peterson is a class fighter. He's at least a class above Victor Cayo. I think he recognizes, though, that he wants to be in the same class as Amir Khan, that this is a fight that posed real risk, and the next time he fought on the big stage, he wanted to feel as though he was being treated fairly and that he was ready for it. And I think all those things went into him fighting Kayo instead of Khan. It isn't clear exactly how much more than the $300,000 he received for having made the, the effort to fight Kayo and then wait and, and up the ante a little bit against Khan. But he said, Larry, it was from 300 to 500. Sometimes in a negotiation, you have to know how to say no. And he knew when to say no. Now he'll try to say no to the fighter who has been the hottest item in the 140-pound weight class, Amir Khan. And now making his entrance to the ring, the defending world champion, Amir King Khan. One thing becomes clear in this arena, Max. Amir Khan's level of stardom elicits a lot of response, both positive and negative. That's the point. Khan stirs up passion somehow, right? Even the guy, even the folks here who are against him are making a lot of noise. He's obviously a star. And as a star, he's willing to fight everyone in the division. As the money fighter in the division, he ducks no one. He'll even fight a good, dangerous contender like Lamont Peterson in his hometown. And the specific subtext there, the proposed fight with Timothy Bradley that did not come off. Which you could say in the parlance of Washington politics was a giant flip-flop by Bradley who called him out and then reconsidered for his own economic reasons. Otherwise, Khan has looked terrific against two lesser opponents and survived Maidana, which was an important test of his intestinal fortitude. He fought the hard-punching beast, Maidana, at a time when others might have been too shy to do so. He wanted to take on Bradley, and when Bradley chose to go elsewhere, many ringsiders saw that as a symbolic victory for Khan. Now he looks for another one here. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the capital city of the United States of America, Washington, D.C., USA. This is the main event of the evening.
12 rounds of boxing for the unified WBA IBF light welterweight championship of the world. All brought to you by Golden Boy Promotions and Con Promotions and sponsored by Cerveza Tecate Con Caracter, DeWalt Power Tools, Guaranteed Tough, AT&T, stay a step ahead with AT&T 4G LTE with speeds up to 10 times faster than 3G, and Microtech, taking technology further. Sanctioned by the District of Columbia Boxing Commission, Chairman Scotty Irving and the World Boxing Association, President Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor Michael Welsh, the International Boxing Federation, President Darrell Peoples, Supervisor Paul Artes. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout, should it go the distance, Valerie Dorsett, George Hill, and Nelson Vasquez, and inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, working for the 36th time in a world championship contest, referee Joseph Cooper. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world on HBO, the officials are ready, the fighters are ready. Ladies and gentlemen, from Washington, D.C., uh, let's get her. Fighting out of the blue corner with head trainer Barry Hunter, wearing purple, official weight 140 pounds. His professional career totals 29 victories, including 15 knockouts, only one defeat with one draw. From Washington, D.C., USA, the number one ranked challenger in the world, Lamont Havis. And fighting out of the red corner with his head trainer, Hall of Famer Freddie Roach, wearing yellow trimmed with red, officially weighing 139 pounds. This Olympic silver medalist now has a professional career total of 27 fights. 26 victories, including 18 knockouts and only one defeat. He's the fighting pride of Bolton, Lancashire, England, the rainy, defending WBA, IBF, light welterweight champion of the world, Amir King Khan. Gentlemen, you can be fast, you got your dressing room. I special you can step of the vessels that you are. Let's shake hands! Let's throw some thunder! Amir Khan is a outsized favorite in this fight, but as Billy Hunter, Peterson's trainer, puts it, the odds say he should be dead or in jail. of course to the life on the streets that Anthony Peterson and Lamont Peterson the older brother survived years ago Hunter is one of those urban saints of boxing who helped to rescue the boys round one begins with Khan moving and Peterson trying to come up the middle Peterson started the fight like he wanted to show Khan that he's in his class in terms of his hand speed well we'll find out Max if this is class warfare great, great. Yeah, you know, as amateurs, Peterson was successful on a national level, and Khan was successful on an international level, was, was just a little bit better, and as a, as a pro, as pro so far, that pattern is held. Khan has succeeded on a slightly higher level than Peterson. 
A sneak left hand on the inside by Khan sent Peterson off balance. Hard shot to the body by Khan. Already he's landed a solid right hand after pushing Khan back to create space and a big time left hook to the body. Peterson misses with the left hook. Khan's hand speed on display. Good left hook, and down goes Peterson. The referee has ruled it a slip. Why is it? The referee ruled it a slip. It did seem that there were feet tangled, and I couldn't see if it was the refs or theirs. Looked like a knockdown from here. Did. We'll watch the replay between rounds. One thing's for sure, it was a very solid left hook to the base. Peterson has good craft and decent punching power. And Khan has been hurt by Maidana and knocked out as a lightweight. Another left hook by Khan and another. Which becomes an incentive in a kind of way for the underdog to hang in there with the hope he can land something that changes the fight. Peterson called Khan an energy fighter, and you can see where he is plugged into some inner energy source. Let's see if this one's going to be ruled a knockdown. Same place, same left hook. This time it is a knockdown. Seven. I don't think Peterson was hurt, but he did go into the ropes and try to get away from the punch, and that can be ruled a knockdown. See, Peterson's the kind of guy who wants everything to be perfect before he lets his hands go. He wants the craft to be just right, and Khan's a guy who will just let the hands fly. That, with his better hand speed, is the difference so far. And in the first round, Khan appeared stronger, faster, more accurate as a puncher. But, but Peterson has been knocked down early in fights yeah, before and come, come back. Knocked down twice for Ortiz by line. Ortiz. All right. Got up to four, uh, down. four to draw. We can't load up with the shots. We're going to put it down. Okay. We can't load up. We can't load up with the shots. Under and out, okay? Double and triple the jab. We pull back. He's going to fall forward with his punches. We can't do that. Keep down here. 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 Here's what was ruled a slip. Yeah, he's, he got his feet tangled with the ref. So though the punch did land, I think the ref was right to call that a slip. He obviously felt it. Here's what was called the knockdown. Right hand didn't land hard. In fact, Peterson landed a good left in exchange and then tripped over Khan's feet. So you could see where Peterson disputes that as a knockdown. Nevertheless, it's ruled officially a knockdown for Khan. And Peterson was the one who tasted the canvas twice in the first round. CompuBox numbers were all con. 14 out of 50 punches landed. Peterson landed by CompuBox count. Only 4 of 12. You may have heard Michael Buffer mention that Khan's trainer, Freddie Roach, like Buffer, was elected earlier this week to the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Also, Mark Too Sharp Johnson, who's seated here at ringside tonight. Also, Tommy Hearns who we expect is watching in Detroit. Riddick Bowe is in the house, the former heavyweight champion. Uh, the last fight we did on HBO here in Washington 18 years ago. Keep your head up, stop. keep your head up. Keep the star head up. started night in Washington. Ray Mancini's also here at ringside. I'll tell you what, so far this is a fast-paced, good fight. Yep. Mighty shots by Peterson there. A good contrast to the heavyweight fight. Smaller men with their movement and their quickness. And not trying to move too much away from each other. Stop Great, great. Stop his head. Keep your head up. You start pushing it down. Tell him. Stop doing that. Let's go. Peterson's now trying to time Khan on the way in. Best way to nullify a speed advantage. A good jab wouldn't be a bad idea either. But so he's not seeing some of Khan's punches. 
And that's not a good sign for him. And Peterson has a good jab. One of the reasons I think Peterson had the leverage to get Khan to come to his hometown, other than the fact that Khan's willing to do that sort of thing because he's a real fighter, is that there aren't that many credible options for Khan to fight at 140 pounds. Bradley didn't want to fight him. A lot of other guys have moved up to welterweight. Here's Peterson. You can see he's a good fighter, and he'll take the fight. Well, Khan's already beaten the guy who in some regard is the best technician in the division, Andre Kotelnik. He's beaten the guy who some regard is the most dangerous puncher, Marcus Maidana. Now he tries to beat a really good all-around fighter in Lamont Peterson. Who's starting to land some solid shots this round, Larry. Mighty yep. shot by Peterson. Working himself gradually into the fight. Tune into the premier 24-7 Flyers on, Rangers move, road move. to the NHL went to classic all of these two Eastern you. Conference you rivals in the lead up to their matchup you in the NHL's annual outdoor showcase side. January 2 you and December 26 that's the first inside. installment of boxing's best no of 2011 six of our top fights in four nights including last weekend's rematch between Miguel Cotto and Antonio Margarito this is DC this is home okay all right? All right. When, when he's in the pocket, he's looking for the big hook. He's, all right? Well, get, get under and out right away, okay, son? Good job. Let's get out of here. Copy box numbers in round two. Khan threw more and landed more, but at a lower percentage. 20 of 67 to 30 percent. Peterson 17 of 44, 39 percent. In the last minute of the second round, Peterson appeared to be getting comfortable, getting his timing, and getting into the fight. And we've got a very nice crowd here in Washington. Uh, 9,000, give or take. A crowded convention hall. They're seated on a flat floor, which makes visibility tough for the people in the back. But to my knowledge, nobody's complaining. They're watching a good fight. Here's an example of Peterson likes to wait until everything's just right. And by the time that happens, Khan's thrown three punches and he's not there anymore. Perfect example right there. Peterson defended well, but Khan is unloading combinations of punches. Judges see that and respond to it. He's admitted, Peterson has that he likes fighting orthodox fighters. Not that Khan is extremely unorthodox, but he is extremely athletic and busy. Hard right hand by Peterson. Peterson, uh, oh, Khan, a, left hook. a box fighter. He'll box and fight. And that's what they're both trying to do. They're both boxing, and they're both willing to mix it up. Peterson landed a really good left hook downstairs. About 30 seconds ago. Another good left hook by Peterson. Now a good right hand upstairs. That got Khan's attention. And a good shot to the body. Peterson doing an excellent job in this round. And Khan is trying to meet the challenge. You can see he's a fighter, Larry. The way he responds to those shots. Maybe not always the smartest fighter, but he's a fighter. I'm not comparing him to Sugar Ray Leonard, who is the best fighter ever to come out of this area. But that was Leonard. If you hit him, his instinct was, I got to hit you back right now. Khan in real retreat mode at this moment. There was a little quick right hand shot to the head that seemed to hurt him. And Peterson just hurt him, I think, again with a right hand to the body. There's a mouse under Khan. Oh, good, nice. good right hand by Peterson. Combination of punches by Lamont. He's having a big round. 
And it looked that for a moment he dazed Khan. And Khan comes right back. Whoa. Right hand, left hook by Khan. Terrific combination. Quite a round. Quite a fight. Here's, here's Peterson. Now, he did some very good work downstairs in that round. Here's some short right hands upstairs. Right on the button. And again, upstairs, snakes it around Khan's defense. Peterson landing the more precise power punches. And landing 11 body shots on the round. 19 out of 35 power shots. Big round for Peterson. Khan was 12 to 29 on the power on the power shots as he was fighting back all the way. Harold, how do you have a two three? I got him. Two rounds to one. 29, uh, 29, uh, 27. Under your card. You know, Jim, you got to give him an extra point for one knockdown in round one, and he certainly deserved that extra point in round one. Round two, I thought he'd be a card one, one also. But round three, he had Lamar Peterson had the place standing, cheering, rooting for him. He's landing the cleaner, harder shots, really coming on like gangbusters. Khan, the champion, is a gutty son of a gun. He's holding up real good, moves real good, plays real good shots. Two to one, and he's caught. Khan, Jim, started going to the body right there. I know you like that. That's what wins fights. And he is trying to use the body punching to take command. Covers up on Peterson's rally. Tries to fire back again. Every time Lamont Peterson challenges Amir Khan, Amir Khan shows you his fighters will to fight back. Peterson's a, a 99%er trying to beat a 1%er. And he is making an excellent showing here so far. And in this round, Larry starting to pick off a lot of those shots that were landing earlier. And, it, and it, it's like both fighters don't think the other guy can really hurt them with one punch. And that's encouraging them to keep coming forward. is starting to roll uh, and Khan has got to be able to stop him in his tracks here somewhere along the way otherwise um, this is not going to be one dinner he's invited to in Washington that he's going to enjoy it would be storybook for Peterson having come up short against Bradley just short against Victor Ortiz to beat the, guy, the number one guy in the division in his hometown. I already want to see the rematch.
of a fight so far. No filibuster in this ring. Peterson's right eye is beginning to swell. Peterson hasn't been able to find Khan to let his hands go as much as was the case in the two preceding rounds and Khan has been getting off combination. Yeah, I think Khan's changing direction more in this round. Using his speed and fighting at more of a distance. Lamont Peterson would love to get Amir Khan into the pocket and just go hard hand to hand. Khan has to continue moving, and in this round, he's been doing it. Good left took by Peterson upstairs. Khan comes back with a three-punch combination. Khan is not lingering on the inside anymore, and that makes it more difficult for Peterson. He's trying to make it his, his athleticism against Peterson's strength of will, uh, fighting in front of the hometown and using uh, the skills that he does have. A little more of a boxing match here in round five. That seems, at least to the moment, to be favoring Khan. Seesaw fight. Good right hand. A better round for Amir Khan. to get them, okay? So I, you understand me? We work too hard, son. Come a long ass way to get here and not put masks on the game. Tomorrow we are hurt. Tomorrow we are pain. But right now, ain't none of that. Let's go to work. Double, triple the jab. Put some back. Khan changing direction more in that round, using his legs a little bit more. Misses a right hand there and loses his balance. But by and large, a much better round for him. Also, throwing putting his punches together better in that round, keeping Lamont Peterson's hands at home for defense. By a CompuBox count, Khan threw a fight high, 23 jabs in that round, landed nine of them. That set the tempo. He held Peterson to 12 of 43. It was a good offensive and defensive round for Amir Khan. You heard Barry Hunter imploring his fighter to give a bigger effort. Double and triple on the jab, he said. Easier said than done when Khan is moving on his feet. Khan was loading up a little bit more. It gave Peterson more counter-punching opportunities. Opportunities to time Khan and catch him. Khan's now fighting at the distance, more behind the jab. There goes three punches in a row, and then he gets out. 
settled down to something different than the, the test that was going on in the first two or three rounds. Now they're, they're relying on their skill, uh, their professionalism, uh, and what they've learned so far in the One fight. One hard body shot for Peterson. Khan moves away. Yeah, I think it is a test in a way for Peterson, though, Larry. You, you heard Barry Hunter in the corner say, put, you know, light, light the match to the gas now, hurt tomorrow. He needs to see that special something from Peterson right here. He wants more activity. Instead, he's getting less. Well, because Khan isn't letting him. That's right. He, you know, there is cause and effect. Two nice body shots. Body shot for Khan, and an uppercut, and a left hook to the body. After a big first round by Khan, though, Peterson seemed to redouble his resolve. Oh, landing some big shots right there. I don't think we'll see Khan go to the ropes too often anymore. Khan was landing some vicious body punches this round. Well, I think one of the questions I had in my mind in this fight is, Stop pushing down. Keep the pushing. is if one of them was losing the body contest, the, the boxing contest, would the other one be willing to try to make a fight out of it? And that's what Peterson is trying here now. We kick up our new year in the ring on January 28th with a boxing after dark doubleheader. Eric Morales faces Danny Garcia. James Kirkland squares off with Carlos Molina. February 4, HBO Sports Legends and Legacy Series presents Namath, an intimate look at the life of one of the most influential athletes of the second half of the 20th century. If you listen to what I say, double, triple the jab. Cut him off, you following him. You feel me? Right, it obviously swings and they're not real quick. Okay, sir? Right. Work that body and back to the head for me, okay? Okay. I love your body working really like double that up and wait to the head, okay? Pay attention. Larry, you mentioned Peterson having less success when Khan wouldn't let him get it close. Here you see Khan just laying on the inside against the ropes. Peterson close, lands the short right uppercut. Copy box numbers through six. Khan, 118 out of 366. Peterson, 104 out of 288. In other words, Khan has thrown 78 more punches in the fight so far. That can affect scoring. Harold, how do you have it through six? One rounds to two. 58-55 on the Akon. You know, Jim, there's 9,000 people in this place rooting for Lamont Peterson to throw some damn punches, and he don't throw. He did great, absolutely great in rounds of three and four. He made a fight out of it. He got in close. He let his hands go. Now he's letting this guy run all over the place and make a fool out of him. 9,000 people want to see Lamont Peterson punch, 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 and he's not doing it. Four to two, Amir Khan. Some of those thousands, Harold, are rooting for Amir Khan. <laughs> Very good <laughs> quick left hook inside by Peterson. <laughs> this is an interesting point in this fight, Larry, that Harold brings up. Yes, on the one hand, Khan sometimes mutes Peterson's offense by doing what Khan does well. On the other hand, this is precisely what I mean by Peterson has to be special one of these nights, even though Khan's doing good work throw caution to the wind a little bit more like that and that hard right hand body shot by peterson khan holds on earlier in the round it appeared that khan had this determined is, he was going to win the fight with left hooks to the body this in this is round one sport where skill uh athleticism doesn't always carry the day and peterson has to show uh, what else it takes to beat skill and athleticism. Right, which given his temperament, essentially as a boxer, is difficult for him. But he's going to have to get over that to win at this level, which he's been unable to do so far. 
I think he knows it. The question is, uh, can he land one or two punches that can turn the thing around when he goes forward? And since he hasn't done that yet, um, I mean, if right in here, he should be able to be hurt Khan. And he had his moments getting Khan's attention earlier in the fight. Maybe he just had another moment just then because Khan started to run. There's a trickle of blood from Amir Khan's nose, perhaps the result of a Peterson uppercut. Well, we're seeing the will neutralizing the skill and more right at this moment. Hard right hand by Peterson. Peterson fighting very hard this round, addressing exactly what was asked of him. Khan pointing to his chin. Stop. Always needs to tag me. Here's where a hometown advantage comes in. One point. Rest taking a point away from pushing. One He's warned Khan several what? times. Let's go. Go Ready Roach says, are you crazy? I don't know that I've ever seen a referee so focused on pushing, which is something normally you get away with. But it's technically illegal. And did obviously he warn he, him? Yes, he did several times. But I don't think he'd have called taking that point away in Great Britain. I've never He's seen it in Las Vegas. But it happened here. Come on. He can't fight, man. Oh, he overrated. You got me? Let's turn it around. I need these three rounds in a row. Listen, trust me, son. Double, triple your jab. Don't worry about going. Here's the point deduction. The ref had warned Khan at least twice about this that I can remember. Pushed off with his forearm again. Uh, I don't know if that's a point deduction, even if you did get two warnings. It was already a big round for Peterson, so in all likelihood, it becomes a 10-8 round on the cards, and that truly narrows the scorecards here in Washington. We've got drama with five rounds to go. Larry, I think before a ref takes a point there, he should say, the next time you do that, I'm going to take a point. I agree, Max. Perhaps another hometown advantage. But here comes Khan now as he tries to make it more of a boxing match and protect what may be his lead on the scorecards down the stretch. We're not disagreeing enough, Max. People want us to disagree more. <laughs> what is there to disagree about? It's a great fight. <laughs> They're having a pretty good disagreement in the ring right now. Where it matters. Oh, there's body shots. Khan landed a big left hook to the body in there. Excuse me, Peterson did. Khan fighting. Like his career depends on it. Peterson, like his life depends on it. That's been Peterson's best punch. A vicious short left hook in the body. And Khan appears hurt in the corner. It hurts to listen to that hook in the body, Jim. It's getting rough in there. I can just hear Amir Khan at this moment thinking, well, I guess it's okay for him to push me. Where is Hillary Clinton when he needs her? No diplomacy here. They're not going to talk this out. No, this is the battlefield. This is war as diplomacy. Good right hand from Khan. Great ebbs and flows in the fight. That was a low blow by Peterson. Yes, it was. The low of the belt line, and it hurt Khan, and there was no word from the referee, Joe Cooper. Real shifts in momentum. Story of the fight difficult to determine round to round. Peterson knows he's found something with these body punches, and he's staying there relentlessly. I think, I think Khan is really now concerned. Well, look, this he fight's really going to take place in the pocket. A, advantage in a fight Peterson. he can lose now. Exactly right. When a top fighter is challenged the way Khan was early and then responds to that challenge, you find out what you have in the challenger. Does the challenger pack it in, convinced now that he's not good enough? That's not what Peterson did here, Larry. And I think that's where Khan's concern comes from. 
Well, I think some of that is the fuel from the hometown. And knowing that this is a critical point in his career where he has to do it or not. And he is doing it at this point. Here's Peterson throughout the round. He really, when he got inside, he really concentrated, especially with that left hand to the body. There was a really good right hand he dug to the body. And as Amir Khan is telling everyone, no, no, Peterson's throwing punches. Later in the round, here's the low blow. It was not called the low blow. It was technically low, though not on the cup. Peterson with a 50 to 20 edge. He had power shots landed in the last two rounds. Most of that to the body. Khan may still think he's winning the fight upstairs. Peterson is definitely winning downstairs. They're even on Harold Letterman's scorecard now with four rounds to go. Terrific fight. Did it get, it's been a seesaw battle, and here Khan comes out fast. I think he may have hurt Peterson. Peterson's shaking no. A lot of times that means yes with a right uppercut. Ooh. Uppercuts and body shots. That's what's been doing it for Peterson. A huge right cross on the chin. You want to know who's winning the exchanges? Just look at which fighter's insisting, no, I wasn't hurt. That guy's losing the exchange. Here's the fighting spirit of Khan again. What a rally. What a fight. We haven't seen one of these in some time. Between skillful fighters in their primes. Khan is loading his punches much more now in this round. Trying to fight fire with fire. Complaining to the referee, maybe about Peterson's head, I couldn't tell. And I don't think Joe Cooper's listening to any of Khan's complaints. Doesn't seem terribly interested. You know, Khan's going three punches to the head at a time. Peterson's blocked most of them with his hands tight. Ooh, good right hand got in and hurt Peterson. Peterson's legs wobbled. I don't know if Khan knows how badly he's hurt. I don't know if Peterson knows how badly he's hurt. Well, he's disguising it very well if he's hurt. And who knows how much Peterson has taken out of Khan with his body attack. Peterson's right eye is starting to swell up now. Much better round for Amir Khan than were seven and eight. Peterson's right eye has been closing for three or four rounds, but he can still see out of it. That time he misses with the swinging right hand. That time he lands. After really staggered by a con right hand that Peterson's walking through this. Willing himself forward. Amazing. I don't know who's going to get that round, but we all won. Come on, people, move! 10-8 <laughs> fans. Okay, you have heard that that round. Get that water. Get that water. Deep breath. Okay? Yeah. All right. Now, the, the volley down the middle is killing them. All right? Are you here? This is everything you worked for. This is everything you believed in. When you was on them streets, what you tell me? Here's Amir Khan's right uppercut. That got Peterson's attention. Peterson answers with an uppercut. 
Khan keeps his chin tucked very well, which is why he's not hurt worse by that punch. And a good left hook that he's been throwing all night to the body, Peterson. And there's Khan's right hand. That really buckled Peterson. I thought that was the most hurt either fighter's been in this fight. Biggest punch of the round. In that round, Khan got the numbers edge again. Landing more shots, landing more power shots. Back ahead of Peterson. Harold, how do you have it? Through nine. Five, five rounds to four. 85-84, Amir Khan. Jim, I thought he went into the lead and ran on a throw about Amir Khan. He did outfight Lamont Peterson. Lamont Peterson looked like, you know, he took the effects of all the shots he's been at the whole fight. But in round 10, Lamont Peterson's fighting back like he did him in a rounds he won. Picked him with those sledgehammer shots, those wide shots, just doing a lot of damage. 5-4, to four, Amir Khan. If it's 5-4, to four, you got it even because of the point deduction. No, no, no. Even at a point deduction. A knockdown for Khan, and Joe Cooper took away a point from uh, Correct, Amir Correct, the knockdown. Right, I forgot about the knockdown. Well, however this goes, Lamont Peterson has moved forward in his career. At some point, he decided he had to become a boxer and a brawler to win with his natural equipment. And he is making it a brawl and it often is working for him. And he's progressed, and every time he's reached the big stage against Bradley, he was basically shut out. He rallied after two knockdowns to come back on Ortiz and get a draw. And here, I think he's doing better than in either of those two fights. The question is, is he doing well enough to win this? still has the advantages when they go to the ropes peterson has the edge very even fight between these two very good fighters tonight oh. peterson kept his left jab out and his left glove out and Khan's face blinded him with it and came off with a real good right hand Four punch combination for Khan. And then two more. This may be another round in which Peterson hasn't let his hands go quite enough. Those four punch combinations from Khan are simply killing time. They're not doing big damage at this point. Correct. But judges see volume punching. And they can gain nothing. Beats doing nothing. Some of the starch of Peterson's body shots have been taken out too. He looks tired. This is DC, man. There'll be no partying on our floor tonight. How bad you want this, man? Carl, how bad you want this, son? You got to show me. The jab, I got to have. Double and triple when you get there, tear his ass off the frame. You got me? Let's go. Copy box numbers through 10. Khan has landed 198. Peterson has landed 194. Khan has thrown 612. Peterson has thrown 485. So Peterson landing at the higher connect percentage, but Khan showing the judges more offensive output. Harold Letterman gave the tenth to Khan, giving him a two-point margin with two rounds to go on the Letterman unofficial card. You heard Barry Hunter tell Peterson in the corner, how bad do you want it? I want to see two and three jabs on the way in, and when you get in, tear him out the frame. Meaning, use the tools you have to get inside, but once you get in there, it's got to be a dogfight. Let go, 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 
both fighters appear to be a little fatigued here. Their punches are not as crisp. Um, and so it's going to go into the last five minutes of this fight to see who can summon, who can fish a little deeper and come up with the the right stuff. Another uppercut by Khan. Another five punch combination. And Peterson showing real desire, stepping with Khan, putting real fast forward pressure on him. At the same time, he's not using the jab to get in. He's got to be careful because Khan can punch with the right hand. There's a two punch combination from Peterson as large been throwing one punch at a time in the crowd. That combination had no starch for Khan. And I agree with you, Max. The issue about which Khan is trying to talk to referee Joe Cooper is Lamont Peterson's head. The and the upward motion of the head inside. Well, bring it up. There's Peterson inside trying to make it the dog fight that Barry Hunter wants. And there's Khan letting his hands go on the side of the ring again. A fight which tests the will of both fighters. fans there are in Washington but there are at least 9,000 that will be out again the next time we give them a show this is as much as and more than anyone anticipated you got a chance to win it but you got to step it up Carl they say you can win this but get your head up but you got to step it up. You feel me? Carl, baby, listen. Do you want your dream to die? Huh? You got a chance, son. You got to stay on his ass. You can... Down, just put him on his ass this time, okay? Yeah. All right? Let's go. Let's three minutes, okay? There's nothing left after this three minutes, okay? So let's go. Put it on him, okay? All right? That uppercut and the hook behind him. He's, he's wide with those shots. That one, two down the middle, all right? Let's rip his shots, okay? You dreamed it. Let's go. He's going to try to run. Cut him off, Alan, to stay on his ass the whole round. Give me three minutes. Give me three minutes, you be jacked. Three minutes, you... This is why prize fighters train for months. For something that will last a little less than an hour. In the 11th round, Khan landed 17. Peterson landed 15 by CompuBox count. Khan threw 70, Peterson only threw 40, but Harold Letterman gave the round to Peterson, bringing him back to within a point on the Letterman club. Not hard to imagine that the fight's on the line right now. Amir Khan trying to hold on to the perceived top spot in the 140-pound weight class. Lamont Peterson trying to reward his own fans. Khan bravely came to Washington to fight a Washington fighter and may be paying the price. Well, he's paying a price for being almost reckless here rather than relentless because Khan has started this round very quickly with crisp punches. Yeah, it may have tried to turn it into a, ba a dog fight. may have backfired for Peterson over the last couple rounds. The effort was there, Larry, but he has been reckless and it's benefited Khan. Well, I'd rather seem reckless... Let's see if this is going to be another penalty or a discussion. Another penalty point against Scott. Stop pushing. Stop pushing. Stop pushing. Let's go. And now somebody's throwing water into the ring. Two points have been taken away from Amir Khan for pushing a penalty we don't think we've seen anywhere in a long time. Look, he has been pushing. But yes. if this fight was taking place in Great Britain and the ref was calling something like that on an American fighter, what would we all think? We talked about Hillary Clinton's dinner for Khan, but this is home cooking of a different kind. So it would appear. 
But let's see if Khan can overcome it anyway with boxing, big work, and multiplicity of punches. He's well, got he's to win this the, round now. He has been winning this round. He needs to keep winning it to have a chance to hold on to his two titles and his dominion in the 140-pound weight class oh. and his superstar status. Good combination by Khan with a right hand to finish it. Khan landed some very good shots to the head in this round. Listen, in Khan's four fights in the U.S., he had two dazzling performances and two of these. That's not bad. What's Whatever not, the result is. What's not to like? Mir Khan is a fighter. Khan brazenly said, and staggered. I have more fans in Washington, D.C. than Peterson. Peterson's got the crowd support most of the way here tonight. That left hook Get that down. staggered Peterson could be the difference in this round, could be the fight. I think Khan's won this round by a wide margin. Well, Meaning it's a, an even round to the point of us. And it was an even-ish fight. I got a hunch Freddie Roach is going to be very unhappy with referee Joe Cooper. In the first round, Peterson was on the canvas twice. The first one was ruled a slip because the referee Cooper got his feet in the way of Peterson. That was reasonable. Then Khan got credit for a knockdown later in the round. In the 12th round, Khan threw 75 punches to only 48 for Peterson. Here's the first round action. And this is the second time in the first round that Peterson went to the canvas. This one was ruled a knockdown. Then as the fight went on, referee Joe Cooper began warning Amir Khan for pushing Amir, or, or Lamont Peterson, who was pushing Khan into the ropes and hanging against him, banging him to the body. First in round seven, Peterson deducted a point from Khan, and then in what may become a controversy and what could become decisive, he did it again in the 12th. Harold, what about these pushing penalties? Well, you know, Jim, I tell you, it, it certainly looked like a, a little bit of a hometown refereeing job by Joe Cooper. I, I mean, you know, I would have stopped and warned the guy a couple of times. I mean, I really didn't see him, you know, a call time and say, I'm warning you. Give him a hard warning. He didn't do that. Uh, you know, he may have said to him a few times, stop pushing, but no hard warnings. It was a very close fight, and Cooper not only took away one point, he had the audacity to take away two points for the same offense. Harold, let's go through the three official judges quickly. Okay, Jim. Uh, well, let's, we'll start with Valerie Dorsett from North Carolina. She's an attorney, a veteran judge, worked all over the place. She worked Lennox Lewis, Hasim Rachman in Johannesburg. She rightly had a 3-1 to Lewis at the time of the knockout. George Hill, former fighter from Philadelphia. He's a veteran. He, he was a sparring partner for Benny Briscoe. This is a guy that worked a lot of title fights. We've had him on HBO football before. He worked one of the Gaddy Ward fights. Nelson Vasquez, absolutely the veteran judge of all judges. I mean, he's been judging since time in Memorial. Comes from San Juan, Puerto Rico. A former policeman, an excellent judge. He'll do a good job. Now, as is not too unfrequently the case, we are waiting for the scores. Harold's right. Um, the, the referee warned him, but there were no hard warnings. There was never, hey, if timeout, if you do that again, I'm going to deduct a point. So the points seem to come off suddenly and unfairly. Yeah. Amir Khan has only lost once in 27 fights. That was the shock knockout. Back in England by hard-punching greatest Prescott of Columbia. That was what prompted Khan to come to the United States, seek the tutelage of Freddie Roach, begin the improvement which has seen him become pretty much the main man in the 140-pound weight class over the course of the past year. Peterson lost a fight to Timothy Bradley, said he wasn't really ready for the fight in his mind, had a draw with Victor Ortiz in a fight in which he was knocked down twice early and then came back and rolled, as Larry Merchant would have put it, in the late rounds. This is a dramatic scene. Will Lamont Peterson finally reach the top of the mountain here in his hometown from homelessness to champion? 
Will Amir Khan regret his brazen choice to come here and fight Lamont Peterson on his home turf in Washington, D.C., when as the headliner with the bargaining power, he didn't really have to do that? Knockdown that wasn't a knockdown. Point deductions that shouldn't have been point deductions, but in between there was great action the whole way. Whale of a fight. The body punching of Peterson, the fast hands and combinations of Khan. Shifts in momentum. Tremendous challenges from one fighter to another. Trying to even the score after each man had done damage. Barry Hunter in the corner pleading with Peterson to give more, give more. Peterson then going out and giving more. Was it enough? Freddie Con or Freddie Roach, pretty calm all the way in trying to encourage Khan to box, keep boxing, and keep using his hands and feet. We are told that the scorecards are in and have been collected, and they are, quote, just trying to do the math. Always an ominous sign. Whatever happens, it'll be controversial based if Peterson should win based on those point deductions. Above us, Barry Hunter, Lamont Peterson's trainer, ever since boyhood, stalking, walking along the ropes, waiting for the decision. Hunter's seen it all in life and in boxing. How would a draw suit you, Jim? <laughs> no problem. They have three judges in the hope of avoiding draws. This was an extremely even fight. And now, Michael Buffer has the scores in his hand. Let's go to him. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. George Hill scores about 113, 112. Peterson. Nelson Vasquez scores at 114, 111. Khan. Valerie Dorsett scores it, 113-112 to the winner by majority decision. And new white brother weight champion of the world, the Mount Peterson. The victory he's been waiting for for a long, long time. That was a split decision. Won the title by split decision. And you saw Khan shaking his head ruefully, probably thinking about the two-point deductions as well as perhaps reflecting on the decision to come to Washington, D.C. Copy box numbers. Khan landed 12 more through nearly 200 more. Landed at a lower connect percentage. Peterson landing at a very high percentage as he trapped Khan along the ropes and threw to the body. Jabs. Khan with the advantage there, landing and throwing more in the jab category. But the reverse will be the case in power shots where Le Peterson lands 19 more power shots and lands at a high connect percentage again. Going to the body along the ropes boosts your percentage. Feels so good for Lamont Peterson to have come all this way. You can't help but feeling that Khan got job. Punch zone numbers will show you the difference in where the punch has landed. Khan taking 119 shots to the body. Peterson taking 193 shots to the head. And Larry stands by now with the winner, Lamont Peterson. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Lamont. Thank you. You fought with such passion tonight. What are your feelings at this moment? Just, it was a long road, and uh, all the hard work paid off. The win can't come in any, can't come any other way. Tough fight, down early again, and I uh, just got to grind the whole fight to, to come back and uh, win the fight. Couldn't have been a, a perfect, a, a better night. You had a chance to fight him last year in Britain you walked away from the biggest payday of your life to take a fight for a fraction of that amount of money what does that say about you as a fighter and as a person as a person I stand for something 
I don't go for anything. I've been taught that since I was young, uh, not to fall for anything. And in the ring, I'm the same way, as you can see, you know, a lot of people, you know, I was a big underdog. A lot of people thought Khan was going to win. Early on, they probably were saying, yeah, I knew it was going to be this way. But, you know, I stand for something. I'm not just going to lay down to anyone. So I fight the whole way through. All right. This fight had a lot of changes as well as a lot of exchanges. When did you realize that you just can't box with him and you've got to go to plan B and or C? Maybe two or three rounds. Uh, Every time I pulled back, he was coming in catching me, and uh, and they, they credited him with a knockdown when I pulled back and he hit me and uh, kind of swept my legs. So I said, you know what, this probably ain't the best thing to do because it's going to keep happening. So I just wanted to go forward and change the game plan. I told you we had three. I went with number two, and it worked. You were always regarded as a boxer. Now you're a boxer and a brawler. You put it all out there. Where did that, when did you see that he was in something that he wasn't expecting? Well, you know, I always like to come out and box, been that way ever since I was an amateur. But uh, they, my coach told me to start working in the inside, and then uh, I started doing it, and then this was a habit after that. Uh, I see that it works, you know, in long distance fights. I wear people down, I go to the body well, so I just continue to do it. What what did you think about the point deductions uh, from him for pushing? I think that uh, far as I think he sh they should have took points for him holding my head down. A lot of times I didn't bend all the way down; it was about this high, and he would just pull my head down. I think they should have took points from that. Uh, he was pushing a lot, but I didn't mind it. I just didn't I didn't like that that uh, dipping down to the head. You're a champion now. This was a very entertaining fight. Would you give him a rematch? I would definitely give him a rematch. Uh, he gave me a chance to fight for a world title. Why not? You know, it was a good fight. I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone enjoyed it. I, don't, I wouldn't mind doing it again. Thank you very much for an outstanding fight. All right, thank you. All right, Mir. Um, you had your way with him early. You were too quick for him, and then he decided to make a brawl out of it and got into you. What were your thoughts at the time as he was getting ahead of steam? Well, Larry, you know, first of all, um, it was like it was like I was against two people in the you know, the referee and Lamont himself. Every time I was, he was coming into me, and he kept putting his head low. I mean, I tried. He just kept putting his head low, and I just couldn't get going. My job was getting him. I, I was a more cleaner fighter. He was so wild in there. And, you know, like I said, I was against two people in there. The referee just wasn't giving me a Did chance. Did you hear him give a warning before the first point deduction? Well, yeah, they gave me the warning, but I couldn't do anything. He was coming so low. I mean, he was just going to come in with his head. Every time I tried to keep him away from me, he just kept coming lower and lower after that. So, All you right, know, Larry, I tried, man. And that day, you know what? I was against two people in there. I was the cleaner fighter in there. And, you know, when I'm, no wonder there's never been boxing in D.C. for the last 20 years because this is what happens. I mean, he was the home fighter, and, you know, that was just what So you're was, saying yeah. the, these were hometown's decisions by the referee? Definitely. You know what? I was against him and the referee in his Let's hometown. take a look at, the, at what we were looking at here as you're pushing him away when his head was down. I had to push him away, uh, Larry, because his head was coming so low. Every time he kept coming low, I mean, I just had to keep, it, keep my hand on top of him because he kept coming in with his head. I mean, his head was in front of his front foot. I was trying my best to keep him keep away from that head, but he just kept coming in with that head. Still, in the late rounds of the fight, he was pushing you around, making you change your game plan, moving around. Uh, he was being effective with his style of brawling. Did you? He was you... being effective, definitely. He kept coming in with it. I mean, he, he was being very pressurizing. I was a cleaner fighter. I was the one countering him. Every time he kept coming in, I was a cleaner fighter. All he kept doing, no, but... all he kept doing was coming in. But you know what? I was in D.C. I mean, I'm ready for a rematch. He wants another fight. I'm here. I'm so ready. And you know what? It was just one of them things. When you're in D.C., you have to uh, win a lot convincingly. Uh, Freddie Roach, were those penalties Traditional in boxing, real in boxing. I mean, what was your? What did you see? Well, the way he attacked, the attack. He came in with, he, he rushed in with his head first, 
And he, yeah, he's either get head butted or push his head down. Were you surprised by how hard and persistent and tough Lamont Peterson was tonight? Yeah, you know, I knew he was going to be tough because he's fighting in his home backyard. He's going to come uh, fighting hard. He's going to have the crowd behind him. And, you know, he did, he, he did what he had to do. But I was a much cleaner fighter. And every time this I tried... It's not get... about clean fighting, Amir. It's about fighting and landing punches. Exactly. And I, and I really think I was a much cleaner. And I landed the precise punches and with power and speed. Thank you very much. It was a terrific fight. And we hope to see you again. Jim.